فذکرونی اذکرکم وشکرونی ولا تکفرون السلام علیکم ورحمت اللہ وبرکاتہ Mr. Jonathan Butterworth, it's a pleasure to be sitting with you. Thank you so much for taking your time out today to uh, talk to me. My pleasure to be here with you, brother. Um, Jazakallah. Likewise. Jazakallah. Um, I want to learn a lot about you today. Uh, and what I'm going to start with is who you are. So you're Caucasian. And the reason why I mention that is because you're an Ahmadi Muslim as well. And you stand out in a crowd of uh, of Asian, predominantly Asian, Asian Muslims. Mm -hmm. And y y your, your, your face has been seen around quite a bit, but I want to know who you are. So who is Jonathan Butterworth? This tall, dapper looking, suave gentleman. Who, who, who is Jonathan Butterworth? You know, <clears throat> so as soon as you say it, then um, the, the words of Hazrat Omar, so Umar was the second caliph in, uh, after the time of the Holy Prophet Muhammad. Peace and blessings of God be upon him. And there's a very beautiful thing that he said. And he went to Jerusalem and he was a, the caliph, so he was a victor. Mm -hmm. He entered Jerusalem and they were offering him these amazing things, wealth and luxurious food and all of these things. Mm -hmm. and you know what he said in response? What did he say? He said that, he said, he, he, he said, I'm, I'm okay. He declined uh -huh. and he said that Allah has honored us with Islam and we will find no honor outside of Islam. Mm -hmm. You know? Okay. So the reason I tell you this is that in reality, anything, anything positive that you see in me, anything good that you yeah. have seen in me, yeah. it is just by the grace of God. Okay. You know? And uh, in fact, the title of this podcast is How Islam Saved My Life. Okay. I would rather say How Islam Transformed My Life, mm -hmm. because I, uh, but you could say saved my life, yeah. you know, yeah. because, you know, maybe, maybe I wouldn't have um, taken my own life. Maybe I wouldn't have done that, yeah. but we all have different routes that yeah. we can go down. And um, before we go... So everything good that I have is, yes. is, is because of yes. this, you know, in reality. Alhamdulillah. But before we go deeper into your life and uh, you becoming a Muslim uh, and the routes that you've chosen, I want to know very briefly, just briefly, if you could say in just a few words, who is Jonathan Butterworth? Okay. <coughs> From the practical side, yeah? Practical side. Yeah. So, so, it's so you can say, yes. who is Jonathan Butterworth? Yeah, yeah. So I am a... So I, I, I'm married... I have a wife, um, she's Spanish, she's oh, also a convert okay. mm -hmm. uh, to Islam. Sure. I have three children, uh, Jazaba, eight years old, mm -hmm. Jahid, five years old, Hafsa, mm -hmm. five months old. Sure. They are wonderful, very yeah. cute. Handful, uh, I'm sure. And a handful, yeah. and, 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 they, and, and very helpful as well, but, okay. but, all, but, but a handful yeah. as well, for sure, actually. And uh, yeah, and, I, and I'm a, a you know, white English guy, as you say, or half Welsh, half English. So I was going to say Englishman. I was going to say Englishman, but I wasn't sure. Well, so. yeah, I, well, I'm, I'm fully English in the sense that I've never lived in Wales, but my mum is from Wales. Okay. My dad is from the north, okay. northern England. And the funny thing about this is that much to my upset, English people will come up to me and say, where are you from? And I know where they're going with it, and they think I'm Scandinavian. Really? Or they think I'm height, German. Then, may, may, yeah. th thank you. This is nice for, <laughs> for saying that, you know. But I think, oh my word. And it gives you kind of a crisis of identity. Yeah, that even the people crisis. from your own land don't yeah. know where you're from. Yeah. But who cares? Because, you know, we're, we're, we're children of God and everybody, you know, it's one, one world that we live in. But, yeah. you know, so that, that's my background, okay. you know from a professional side and whatever, then you could say that, okay, I, I worked as a lawyer and I still work as a lawyer, but that's all nonsense because in reality, I'm not defined by what I studied or what I did. And in reality, <clears throat> it's more of a, I think, these things put up more barriers between us, if anything, than, okay. than show our, the true nature of ourselves. Very interesting, very interesting. I like that and I'm gonna pick on that yeah. in a bit. 
the real crux of why we're here. One of the things that we're told to do during Ramadan is to read the Holy Quran and to not just read it superficially, but to really, His, uh, His Holiness Hazim is Masrur Ahmed, head of the Ahmadi Muslim community, mentioned recently to not just read it superficially, read it, go deep into it. You know, read the C, read the commentary, um, and really understand what you're reading. So you came to us today with a verse, and the verse was shown at the beginning of this clip, um, and I'll paraphrase if I can remember correctly, from chapter two, verse 153. And if you remember me, I'll remember you, and uh, be grateful to me, and don't be ungrateful mm -hmm. along these lines. Mm -hmm. So I want you to explain. This is spot on. Oh, ungrateful to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I want you to explain why this verse is important to you and why you brought that with you today here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 for sure. So I'll do it from a personal side, yeah? Please. <clears throat> so, um, you know, actually, when I, 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 I went to Paris with my family and... Uh, the City of Love. The ci City of Love, I, yeah. I believe so. <laughs> yeah, 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 I, I think so. Yeah. And, uh, and I was there, and I was with my little brother, I was with my mom, I was with my dad. And, and I'd just come to Islam, and this was maybe 2011. Okay. And, and I wanted to think about how I could um, talk to my, to my family about um, Islam. And had they known that you were a Muslim? Had they known they, that you had converted? They knew for sure. They okay. knew, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, you know, and I've spoken to them and these things. But it, it was quite strange. Um, um, it, was, it, was an, it was an unusual thing for them to think, why would our son come to Islam? And, you know, it's not from their background, it's not from my background, so, so why would I have done it, you know? This is what they were thinking. Yeah. So I wanted to kind of help them to understand it. So I was coming back from Paris and I was thinking about the Holy Quran and okay. then I, I wrote a poem. Okay. Oh, that's, a, that's another way I know you. I forgot to mention, yeah, as, as a poet. But, uh, you, you were a poet, you know, yeah. and, uh, and so I was thinking whether or not I would mention this today, but, but why not? I'll mention it, yeah? Mm -hmm. But this verse really stuck with me. So I wrote a poem about this verse. So I can, I can mention a little bit about that. But before I do, then maybe I'll say why, because the thing is, for some people, they think of the Quran as a kind of an abstract thing that's very, it's a book you put on the shelf and you have to read it in the morning because you have to, maybe, maybe some people think that. And, um, and it's kind of separate from you and from your life, you know? But when I came to Islam, then I read the Quran and I found these amazing verses that for me gave me answers to my questions, my deepest questions, and, and gave me guidance that I had never had access to in my life, you know? Mm -hmm. So one of these questions was, who, who am I and who am I meant to be? in the sense that what is, what is it to be a man? What is it to be a young man? Okay. What is it to be a successful man? What should I aspire to be, you know? Mm -hmm. And of course, you have things inside of yourself, but you're a young guy. You're trying to work out who you are and what your place is in the world and bigger questions about where have I come from? Is, is there a purpose to my life? Is there a purpose to this earth? and then put all of that together, who am I, you know? Mm -hmm. And you know who you are in a sense, but it's, it's sometimes hard, you know, we're here, we're in Morden, London is that way. And London is a wild place full of buses and metro uh, tubes and money and, and everything, you know? So who are you in that place? And you go along and there's buses that go past you and they have models on the side and handsome guys, muscular guys and all of the rest, very wealthy people and all of the rest. Where are you in amongst all of that, you know? So this is a question many young guys ask themselves, you know, who am I? And um, so it's this big, verse of the... It's a big question to be asking in your mid-twenties. You were in your mid-twenties around then, I'm guessing. Right? Yeah, 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 that's yeah. right, that's right. But I think even in my uni days, you know, it's maybe un an unconscious question initially. Yeah. Um, 
Uh, but you, you ask it, I think, you know, I think many people ask it. And if they don't ask it, you're kind of, you're told it by other people that this is who you should be. Yeah. You know, my son is continually saying to me, dad or papi, because he speaks, you know, a bit of, they speak Spanish yes, mainly yeah. in the house, yeah. you know, who's better, Mbappe, Haaland, Messi, Ronaldo. And he's working out who is he? Yeah. Because this is what young people do. You know, mm. Graylish was very popular during the Euros. Mm. Everybody had Graylish haircuts. Mm. Beckham was popular back in the day. Everyone had Beckham haircuts. Yeah. Look at the Brazil team. They've all got peroxide blonde haircuts mm. because we are copying one another and we're working out who are we in light of how, who everybody else is, you yeah. know? So, so who am I and who are you and, and who are the other young guys around us and who do we aspire to be? What does it mean to be a man, you know? If that's not too kind of uh, deep for this early in the morning, you know? But I needed to work this out for myself. Yeah. So I read the Quran and I saw this verse, remember me and I will remember you and be grateful to me and don't be ungrateful to me. And there's another verse in the Holy Quran <clears throat> that says, do not be like those who forget Allah and Allah causes them or caused them to forget their own soul. Okay. So don't forget Allah because when you forget Allah, Allah causes you to forget your own soul. Mm. And I thought, wow, what is this about? How is it possible that you can forget Allah and you forget your own soul? Mm. But for me, I realized it is completely true. So true, because the more time you spend thinking about yourself, how can Jonathan get the best job? How can Jonathan get the best car? How can Jonathan be the most popular guy? How can Jonathan be whatever, whatever anybody wants to be? How can Jonathan be this? Mm -hmm. The more you can become lost in that, because you're just thinking about yourself all the time. The more you think about yourself, do you really fulfill your needs? You know, what, what happens when you do that? And that's the, the root of ego, you know? It's the root of selfishness, you know? It's, and the more you try to fulfill your selfish needs, the more you, the, you try to push yourself up the pile, push other people down, then in reality, the more you forget yourself because you're spent continually just becoming more and more egotistical, I want to be the most this, I want to be the most that. And, and the more you do that, a funny thing happens that actually you don't feel you're becoming yourself. You become, the, you feel that you're actually forgetting yourself, you know? Okay. And when you mentioned um, when you tried to explain, when you wanted to find a better way to explain things to your family, this is what you mentioned at the beginning, right? Yeah. How did this verse help you explain things better to your family? Did it help your relationship with your family? Did they learn anything um, from you in regards to remembering Allah and helping you remember yourself? How did that, how did that come about within your family situation and in your, in your, in your family settings? Well, you know, it's a, it's a journey, to be honest. Okay. It's a journey that I went on and it's a journey I'm still going on. You know, that's the thing. Okay. And, I th and it's a journey that my family are still going on as well. And I think that in some ways, in many ways, we've only just begun that journey, to be honest. Allah is the best of planners and he teaches you things through life, yep. you know. So when certain things happen, then you realize things when those things happen. So I think that in reality, so for example, with my father, then my father and I, we now share so much in terms of our faith, in terms of spirituality. Oh, wow. And Has your father converted? So not, not officially, okay. no, or not, okay. not, not formally in the sense of saying that he's a Muslim. Okay. But in reality, then I say to my dad that, Dad, you are Muslim. Mm -hmm. And I say to my mum that, Mum, you are Muslim. And, and I tell them this in the sense that they are spiritual people, you know. And, and what Islam means is to submit yourself to God. Yep. And, and I say, <clears throat> you know, for my father, that that is what he wants and, yeah. and that is what he seeks, you know, in a deep sense. So for this reason, I say that you are Muslim to him, you know. Yeah. But it, it was other things that helped them to understand why it is that, that I became a Muslim and why I am a Muslim. So, you know, one topic I would say in particular is the, the topic of, of, of death, 
life and death because, and this was something for myself that took me to Islam okay. or took me to God okay. because I realized that my life on this earth is limited, it's finite. I'm not going to be here forever. Mm. And one day soon, and this might seem depressing for some people, but it's a reality and there's nothing that we shouldn't shy away from it, is that uh, this room right now is cold. Yeah. I am cold and you are cold and, and that's the reality. Mm. There will be a time when I will be, I will be buried mm. and I will be in the ground and that time will come and the ground is a cold place. Mm. This is a strong topic and, and this might be strong for people to hear, but what do you do with that? What, how do you make sense of that fact? And this is something that I've talked to my family about, I've talked to my dad about, okay. and it moves him because it's a reality that we have to think about and it makes you think that, okay, what is the purpose of my life and how do I find answers to those questions? How do you work out who you truly are? That goes back to that earlier verse, yeah. you know? And so the things that I've shared with my dad is that actually to find answers to these questions, then there's many ways. Yes, you use your rationality, you think and you philosophize and you look at the world around you, you look at the universe, but also you pray. And in the Holy Quran, Allah Almighty says that, <clears throat> tell the believers that I am near and that I, that when they, when they tell the supplicant that when they pray to me, that I, that I answer their prayers. Yeah. This is also mentioned in the Hadith and that I'm nearer to them than, than their jugular vein. Yeah. So this is how my journey with my father has been, especially in my family, is to look at these concepts of the purpose of life, the reason of life, who we are, what is our identity, mm -hmm. and also what happens when we die. Is there life after death? Is there actually an even eternal or, or m much more beautiful life that you have after death? Yeah. And when you talk about these things in the verses of the Holy Quran, this is the journey that I've gone on with my, with my family, you know. Alhamdulillah, I think it sounds like an amazing dynamic that you have with your parents because you're able to have that dialogue openly. And I've got two questions. I think the first one is probably a bit more pertinent only because we're talking about your family and your parents. Have you ever been worried or concerned that, uh, we, you, you've mentioned that, you know, one day we are all going to have to pass. Are you ever concerned that your parents will come to pass without having understood and accepted Islam. Is that something that you think about? I know other people, uh, converts, have spoken about this and they are worried that their families haven't accepted Islam. Um, is that something that presses on you? Or is that something that concerns you? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a good question and a uh, direct one as well, you know, which is good. And, um, and I've, talked, I've talked to my mum and dad about this, you know. Okay. And, and they, they've said to me a uh, funny thing, you know, my mum has said to me, um, or my dad has said to me, uh, in, in a joking way, they've said, are you, you know, oh, you're trying to convert me. Oh, you're, 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 you're trying to convert me and, and these sorts of things. Yeah. And I've said to them, and this is the honest answer that actually I'm not, it's not about conversion or that I want for them. It's the same thing I want for myself. <clears throat> and I worry more for myself than I worry for them, or at least equally. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing that I worry for my family, for my children, for my wife. It's the same thing I worry for the people of London. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing that the Holy Prophet Sallallahu worried about. And that the verse of the Holy Quran mentions where it says that will you grieve yourself to death out of love for them, that Will I know Allah Almighty as he should be known? Do I know Allah Almighty as he should be known? You know, Allah Almighty tells us about, you know, ma'arifat, uh, about true knowledge, about ilm al-yakeen, haqq al-yakeen, ayn al-yakeen, or ayn al-yakeen, haqq al-yakeen, knowledge of faith, ilm al-yakeen, ayn al-yakeen, to see faith, haqq al-yakeen, to know faith truly. And so the prayer that I have for them and the prayer that I have for myself is that the same prayer for my children is that Allah give us knowledge of you, help us to know you. Don't let us be ignorant. Don't let us live a life of ignorance. Don't let us miss out on this opportunity, you know, that there's a veil in front of our eyes in relation to him. 
because it's not about a label, it's not about, oh, I'm a Muslim, oh, alhamdulillah, great. But what do you do with that label, yeah. you know? And so in this sense, and this has helped me and my dad, and I think this is the key thing for people to know in the public, it's not about becoming this or that or this label or that label, but it is about knowing Allah Almighty through knowing Allah Almighty, you know yourself, yeah. you know your place in this universe. Mm -hmm. But above all, it's about knowing Allah Almighty and establishing that relationship of love with Allah Almighty. This is what my question was, that surely must press on you quite a bit, that you, know, you want to see your family before you, especially your most dearest and loved ones, establish that relationship. Um, also, if you can link it back to that verse as well, so that they can know themselves um, before they pass. So this must be quite a bit of a concern for you at, at times, right? Yes, yeah, yeah. Well, this is why I wrote the, the poem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so the, the, the poem, and uh, it was a... Can't, can't remember it fully, actually. I was going to say, if you have anything to remember from that, it would be If I, have, if I can to, remember it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it would be great to hear. Shall, from, I, from shall I tell you the chorus? Sure, yeah, please, yeah. please so, do. So the, the, the chorus is, and I'm not the best of singers, yeah? Uh, <clears throat> and um, uh, so it's essentially, it was, it was to help them to understand that through Allah Almighty, then you can, well, in fact, before I say this, I'll tell you just a, a verse of a very, of a, um, you know, we, we all come from our own cultural background. Yep. So before I came to Islam, then there was, there was various different things I used to listen to. And there was this one line of a, of, a, of, a, of a lyric that would stay with me, which is that it talks about God in reality. And it says that there is a designer, an alignment, a cry of your heart. You will see the beauty of love as it was made to be, or it will make you more like the man that you were made to be, okay. make you more like the man that you were made to be. Okay. And it's saying that God will do this to you. Mm -hmm. And so this is again what this verse is talking about. So when I was coming to Islam, this was what was in my mind that does this happen? That actually you become who you are truly meant to be yeah. when you find Allah. So this was just a question, you know, one of my many questions yeah. that I had. Mm -hmm. So this is the poem, which links in with that theme and that concept that is very relevant to my family and to my friends and to many people, you know? Yeah. So um, it, it's essentially saying that, um, so it goes like this, yeah? So it says, uh, so it's, 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 so it's called forgetting me, remembering you. Okay. And the idea is that when you forget yourself, sorry, when you forget yourself and you remember Allah, this is when you find the answers to life. Yeah. Okay. Shall I sing it for you, brother? Please, please, yeah? Please, yeah. So it's forget in me, remembering you. Forget in me, remembering you. And there's various, there's various different parts of it, and the poem's quite lengthy. But this was the key thing that I found that I loved, is that there's a, there's a concept in Islam, which is, it talks about the, the death of the self, which is fana baka lika, you know? And this is a concept amongst the Sufis and the Promised Messiah talked about it. But this is what I'm singing about in reality. And when I, when I came to Allah, I used to go into a field okay. and I would pray to God, but I would even sing to God. Okay. And this might sound strange, you know, but it was from my heart to, to the one who made me, you know, yeah. the one who I loved and the one that I had found in my life and that I wanted to dedicate all of my life to, you know. Yeah. And what this concept of fanna bakalika is that there is a death inside of you. And when this death takes place, then you are reborn in your true state. And all of the impurity in yourself dies. 
and all of the stupidity and all of the nonsense and all of the things that you're wasting yourself on and all the things that you're wasting your time with and whatever this might be, your ego, your vanity and whatever it is, you know, this dies, this goes, you're reborn and your self hasn't died, but your true self is found. The true you, the true me, the person we were made to be. This comes forward like a phoenix from the ashes, you know? And when this happens, then it soars. And then it's Likka, which is when it meets Allah Almighty. Yeah. And this is the verse of the Holy Quran where it talks about the status of the Holy Prophet yeah. And it says that he rose and he descended and they met one another like two, two, two bows or two bows, two arches yeah. meeting in the middle, you know? Yeah. So when people hear me talking about poetry, they, they hear me talking about even lyrics of songs, it might be Where's this coming from? This is strange. How, what is this young English Muslim doing? But this is my background and this is where I'm from. I, I can't, you know, that's what's formed me. My culture formed me, but the Holy Quran has formed me in reality. And the two for me are like this. The Quran isn't, isn't alien to me. In reality, I, it's, my, it's my flesh, it's my bones. It makes me who I am. My prayer makes me who I am. My culture makes me who, my, who I am. My family makes me who I am. But in reality, the person that I really am is the one that Allah Almighty made. Yeah. So I'll, I'll just tell you one verse from this poem, okay. which is that it says that uh, I wrote, um, no, my, no, my Lord didn't make a bad man, just a small boy crying to come home, or you could say calling to come home. You know, and there's a concept in Islam that everybody's made pure, nobody is made evil, nobody is made bad, nobody is made a sinner, not even the worst of people. <clears throat> it's different things that happen to them that cause them to do these things. But there's something inside of all of us that is good, that is pure, that is beautiful, and that is the true self, and, and to, that is what comes forward. And to get to that, you have to remember Allah and forget yourself. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So it's remember me and I will remember you yeah. Yeah. and be grateful to me and do not be ungrateful to me. Yeah. Yeah. So this is why I love this verse. Yeah. This is why I love the Holy Quran. This is why I love Allah Almighty. This is why I love Islam. But in reality, what I wanted to share with, with anyone who's not a Muslim is that these things are not just for me. These are for everybody. And it's, it's natural to the human soul. It's natural to me. It's natural to you. And it's natural to all of us, you know. Definitely. Jazakallah. Um, thank you so much, uh, Jonathan. I I'm sure we could have had a conversation that would take up this whole day, uh, but unfortunately, due to limited time, um, we're going to have to stop here. And I, and I think what you have pressed upon and what you've um, spoken about today is very profound, very, very profound in the sense that to truly know yourself and to really know yourself, you have to forget yourself and just remember Allah then you will find out who you really are. And I would love to have spoken a bit more about, you know, what sort of characteristics you had to go away with and, and get rid of to really come out to be your true self. But um, Jazakallah, thank you so much for your time today. And inshallah it, it has, and I know, I know, I'm sure it has inspired many people around the world, inshallah. Inshallah. Jazakallah. Jazakallah. Thank you, thank you very much. Jazakallah.